as you have seen before, our definition just for doing like a little bit of arithmetic and a couple of formulas has grown uh, fairly in complexity. And, um, and this, and you will see very soon how this can explode and like the grasshopper definitions, a grasshopper definition, definition is the name that uh, it would usually use to refer to uh, uh, a file that has all these components and all these, um, and all these um, things floating around. Um, it's very common that the complexity of these things grows so large that it becomes like a visual clutter and is very, very difficult to read. So um, I would like to show you some techniques on how to keep your definition clean and tidy so that when you get back to it or that you while you work with it, or if, especially if you're working with uh, teams of other people, how to keep things clear so that other people can understand the the, the spaghetti that you have made out of these components. So we can see things, we can see here, for example, that we have a bunch of components um, and like these things are not aligned, blah, blah, blah. And we don't have a clear distinction what its inputs, what its outputs. So there's a couple of things that we can do uh, to keep everything a bit cleaner. So for example, something that I can do is I can group components by by categories or by um, or by operation, I don't know. So for example, I can say, I'm going to choose all these components here and I'm going to press with the middle of my mouse to have this pop-up of options uh, show on my canvas. And there's a bunch of things. I can turn the pre-validation on and off. I can enable or disable the components. I can go to settings, I can do other things, but this one here is called grouping. And what it does is that it creates this sort of like um, group around um, sliders. And I believe that if you just install Rhino, I believe the default color that you will have here is some kind of green, uh, I believe. Um, but I have customized that color. And what this group does is that now, no matter how you move your components, they're always going to remain grouped in that particular, um, with that particular group. And also I can click on the group and then move it around so that all the components move evenly. So, so that is actually very handy. But one of the nicest things that I like about groups is that I can, I can, for example, I can right click on the group, go here and then type a name. So for example, I can say these are going to be the input parameters. So this is what's important for me. This is the, the values that I want to use to control my definition. And then the rest is just code. It's just operations that uh, the user of this definition should not really care about. Uh, I can also do some playful stuff. So I can go instead of box outline, I can do like a blob. So I can have these things like be blobby blobby right now, or I can, um, I can do rectangle outline. So I can do, I can have them be like a blop, blop, blop. And then the, 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 um, the description just updates. I can do the same by double clicking. Uh, no, I don't think you can do that. Uh, anyway, uh, so I can do that. And so that I can move all the components synchronously. And I can also change the color. So I can say, for example, these are going to be red, because they are the input. So it's very important that they that they are these ones, I'm going to group them. Now, instead of doing the button and the grouping, I just did control G, which makes uh, makes grouping much faster. And then I'm going to right click here and say, well, this color of this one is going to be like a light gray. And these are going to be the main, main operations. Okay. And um, so these are going to be the main operations. And then here, I'm going to group this and maybe I find another color. Like for example, maybe I can do uh, light blue or light purple. Uh, maybe I can do light blue or cyan and then see, say these are the results. Okay, so now my definition looks a little better. It's easier to read, it's easier to understand what is what. Um, however, I do have a little bit of OCD uh, and the fact that these boxes are not perfectly aligned and these are like a little bit off from each other, it's kind of killing me. <laughs> so thankfully we do have uh, some tools that can help us with that. So if I select all of these components, you can see that uh, uh, this small black squares pop up. These are alignment buttons. 
So what I can do is, if you're familiar with Illustrator, for example, you can align things uh, along the vertical axis, you can distribute them evenly. So something that I can do is I can say, I'm going to distribute these ones, I'm going to distribute them evenly, I'm going to align them to their center of, so I click this vertical arrow here, and now all these components have aligned perfectly in the vertical and along their centers. But I also, this one is a little closer than this one, and this one is farther away. So something that I can also do is I can select them all, and I can click on these parallel bars so that I can say, I want to distribute all of these components evenly in the vertical direction. And now you can see that the gap between each component is identical. So my OCD right now is like super, super happy. But what if I want to align these guys also exactly like the ones that I have here. Well, first of all, something that I can do is I can say, well, I can move this. But if you notice, if I move it at some point, if I move it up, at some point, it's going to snap uh, to the same horizontal. Oh, sorry, control C. Uh, if I move it up, you see that it's going to snap. Boop, it just you see how it just snapped. And now it's perfectly horizontal, according to this one. If I do that with that one, and I do the same with this one, boop, it just snapped. Now I can choose them all, I can align them through their center, and then I can also distribute them evenly. And now, oh my god, how much nicer is this, right? <laughs> uh, I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to sleep much happier tonight. <laughs> With everything clean and tidy and aligned. Oh my god, this makes me so happy. Um, which, so as you can imagine, reading these kind of uh, definitions makes life much, much easier and much nicer for everybody who's working with um, grasshopper definitions, especially because this can grow in complexity very, very fast. Additionally, something that we can do, and it's even a little bit uh, better, is that just as we can name um, inputs, value A and value B, we can also name panels. So we can right click on this panel and say this is going to be the result of an addition. Okay, this is going to be the result of a subtraction. This is going to be the result of a multiplication. Oh, but I, you can see that this is, okay, this is, I need to expand this a little bit more. This is going to be the result of a division. And this is going to be the result of power. And now, I can do the same, I can snap it, I can snap it, and I can align them vertically and distribute them evenly. Okay, and boop, boop. <laughs> and, um, and now I think things are a little clearer to read than there were before. Uh, similarly with this, I can do something similar, I can just say, okay, this is going to be uh, the input parameters, these are, I'm going to align this, I'm going to align this here, and this is going to be, for example, this is going to be the circle length, and this is going to be, I'm going to group it, control G, and this is going to be the circle area, okay? And this makes things much easier to move around, and I can give them, you know, I can give these things color, of course. Uh, oops, no, not that. Uh, so I can give these things color, uh, like here, for example. Uh, you see? Or like this one. Uh, up to you. Okay. So this is keeping definitions tidy and clean. I very, very, very strongly <laughs> recommend that you do a lot of this, that you group things, that you give them colors, especially that you give them uh, ooh, input, that you give them names, um, and that you keep things tidy and clean, not just because it's good practice in general, but especially because um, it's very, very common to grow in complexity and things get very hard to read very fast. On top of that is really good practice if you're working with teams of people. So if other people have to read your grasshopper definition, this will they will very, very strong. They will be super grateful about this. But last, and probably the most important reason, for your own sake, because it's very, very common to write a definition 
and do something like an amazing algorithm that does something, something, something. And then a week after, you will have totally forgotten what you did and why you did things. So using groups as a way of annotating to yourself, adding comments about like, this is doing so much, this is doing so blah, 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 is actually extremely, extremely helpful if you're going to be going back and forth between files. And uh, because trust me on this one, you will forget how and why you did certain things on, on with this. So if you want to avoid future headaches for yourself in your life, make sure to do clean and tidy code like, um, like I just showed you right now. Okay, I'm going to try during the course of this course to add some groupings and some namings as we do more complex stuff.